let's move on. Okay, so now we understand what is optimality condition, and then we know that an optimum condition has to satisfy the first order and second order uh, properties. Then we move on to another, another topic is, how about we talk about some optimization problems that are solvable? Okay, there are lots of optimization problems. Some are solvable and some are not easily solvable. Uh, the solvable ones are called the convex optimizations. Um, so to motivate this discussion, I want to show you this example. Uh, this is called the uh, log sum exponential function, or some people call it the uh, logistic regression function, a very typical thing that you will do in training a classifier. Okay? So this is, let's say this is your loss function, ignoring any of these regularizations. Okay, just the loss, pure the loss function. You want to minimize this function with respect to x. Okay, x is your variable. So you try to um, minimize that. So now you go back to the previous slide. You say that, how do I find the minimum point? Well, take the gradient, set it to zero. All right, so let's take the gradient and set it to zero. Oh, immediately you run into a trouble because you can take the gradient. Now, taking the gradient will take you some time, but let's say you do have this gradient ready, setting it to zero and finding out the x star, that could be a nightmare because this equation, unfortunately, does not allow you to have an analytic form of the solution. So then what do you do? Well, then you need the algorithm to find a solution. Uh, there are multiple ways to solve this problem. Well, you can run a gradient descent algorithm, which is what is being done in most of the black box um, uh, uh, toolboxes okay, out there. When you have an atom optimizer, it's doing stochastic gradient descent. It, it, it's built in, okay, so they can find the minimum point for you. But uh, um, before we use those toolboxes, uh, I want to introduce you to this um, very easy to use uh, toolbox. It's called a convex optimization toolbox. Uh, what it does is that you type the optimization uh, function into your Python code, type your constraint into your Python code, click a button, and then you get a solution. Literally, it's like this. Okay, so let, let me show you how do I solve this problem. Okay, so let's see, you have this log sum exponential function here, and then you have, uh, I'm just adding some regularization function uh, to make it easier to solve. You import this library, you define the dimensionality of your problem, and then you, 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 you define your A matrix, your B vector, and then you take a lambda, so this is like setting up a problem. Then is the magic. Uh, you, you, call, you, you create a variable, you say that objective equals to cp.minimize cp.log sum exponent, log sum exponential a times x minus b, a times b, um, plus b or minus b, time, plus lambda times cp dot sum square, cp dot sum square, okay. Just literally put all these down, following the correct syntax, okay? And then what? And then type uh, optimum objective value equal to prop solve. You get a solution, okay? Now, if you have constraint, just put a constraint here, cp dot constraint what, okay? You, you, know, let's, you have a list of constraint, and then type prop dot solve. You get a solution. Okay, so you don't have to worry about too much what is going on in this. And it's guaranteed to give you the global minimum point as long as the function is convex, as long as the problem is convex. All right, so this is the beauty of this, all these uh, libraries out there. So now we ask, okay, what is com convex function now? Okay, can you, can you give me a more precise de definition of convex function so that I know uh, uh, when I can apply these two boxes? So. Let me define a convex function for you first, and then we can talk about some properties. Um, if I give you any loss function, okay, and if you can check the following condition is satisfied, then you know that the function is convex. Like what? Okay, so first of all, you pick two points, x and y, okay, pick two points, x and y, and then you form a linear combination of lambda and one minus lambda. Of course, uh, having this choice, you assume that the lambda is between zero and one. Pick a lambda, and then form a linear combination of the points, and then you evaluate this function, okay? If it is less than or equal to, uh, lambda times the function evaluated at x, uh, plus one minus lambda times f evaluated at y, if that inequality holds, you have a convex function. 
Now you don't get this uh, equation, no worry. Let's draw the picture. Okay, so let's say you have a function here. Okay, this is your function. Here is your x. Here is your y. The linear combination of lambda x and 1 minus lambda y is somewhere in the middle. Well, it has to be somewhere in the middle because your lambda is between 0 and 1. Okay, so you have a point here, and then uh, you evaluate the function uh, at this point, so that means you're evaluating the point at here. That is the left-hand side. Is it good? Okay, so you, you have a function, you look at the point, and then you evaluate the point at here. Now, let's look at the right-hand side. The right-hand side says that I have fx, fx is here, and then fy is there. You form a linear combination of these two points, that means you're drawing a line. Okay? And if this, uh, uh, this inequality says that this red line is always higher than the, this blue curve, uh, black curve. If you, if you have that inequality satisfied, yes, you have a convex function. Here is a kind of example. This is not a convex function. Why? Well, you pick x, you pick a y, you form a linear combination of x and y. You look at the midpoint, you pick a point here. This is your evaluate point. This is your left hand side. And then you look at the red curve, the red curve is below that. So that is not a convex function. So if you want to draw a simple picture, what is convex? Well, this is convex. This is not a convex. This is called concave. Okay, so convex functions is defined as functions whenever you have a positive curvature. Okay, or it satisfies this uh, criteria where you draw a straight line. The straight line is always above your all the values under the curve. Um, these are a few examples, okay, which one is convex, which one is not convex, this is convex, uh, this is also convex, by the way, okay, this is called strictly convex because at any dimension, okay, any angle is convex, this one is just that uh, at one angle, this angle, it is uh, convex, but at this angle, it is not convex, it is, it's, it's, it's strict line, okay, uh, so this is still convex, this is strictly convex, this is called concave. And here, this is non-convex. Now, there are other ways of verifying convexity. Uh, the first one is the one I just introduced, okay, which is uh, really what I call it the definition of a convex function. Uh, the third one is also easy to understand that you, you check the, the hashian and show that it is positive semi-definite. If it is a strictly greater than, then you have a strictly convex function. If equal to, then you have a convex function. Same for here. The second uh, criteria is called the first order convexity criteria, uh, where you can show, if you can show that fy is bigger than fx plus this gradient f um, transpose y minus x, if you can show this to hold for any x, y, then you also have a convex function. Now, uh, how, how, how is that true? We draw a function here, it's a convex function, okay? And then, you draw a straight line. Now, what is the straight line? First of all, you have x and y here, and then you have a dot. Okay, what is this dot? This is uh, fx. And once you draw this line, it will be fx plus the gradient of f evaluated at x, and then transpose x, y minus x. This is like a, like a first order approximation at this point. See that, okay? So you do a, you do a Taylor approximation at this point, to the first order, you will get a tangent line. Go to this point, do the first order approximation, get a tangent line, and then you propagate along this tangent line to the point here. That will be uh, your value, okay? That will be this fx plus, this is your slope, plus how, however uh, interval that you need to travel. Okay, so that would be the point. Here is your fy. Well, fy has to be bigger than this quantity. If it's a convex function, that's how you can get to this criteria. Okay? All right, so these three are equivalent. If you can show one, then the other two will satisfy automatically. Okay, so depending on the problem that you have, you may want to show this, you may want to show that, you may want to show this. Um, they are all equivalent. All right, so now why do I want to introduce this convex notion here? It's because um, you can e in many cases, you can easily check whether your loss function is convex or not, by just drawing out some pictures, okay? And if the, if the function is convex, you have a pretty good sense that if I run my gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent, the solution that I'm gonna get, it will be global or not. 
So you have some kind of certificate to your solution. If you are looking at a deep neural network, then you realize that the, 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 the space is highly non-convex, and so then you need to worry, okay, if I run a stochastic gradient descent, will I ever converge to a solution I want? Then you need to look at all these regularizations, and then I analyze the stochastic uh, gradient descent algorithm to see if there's any smoothing going on in your, in, in, in your algorithm. Right? So this convex uh, analysis uh, is playing a crucial role throughout the course. And actually, in, out there, uh, out there in any literature, in any conference, uh, convex optimization is everywhere. So pay attention to this notion of convexity.